So when people talk about AI today, actually what we have is really just expert systems, systems that are so good at beating the world champion of chess and go, but then can they do anything else besides that? Not really. So we cannot really say that they are intelligent, they are expert. And one of the problems behind that is that most of these tools actually don't have any common sense. The reason is that we don't really speak about common sense knowledge on the web. So if you have a super intelligent tool that is learning from the web, it can learn that, for example, iPhone is a phone, but it will not learn that I need a, a, a cup to contain water and all those other kinds of things that are so important for us including affordances and size and compositionality, typicality, location, and many more. These are things that we, they're so trivial for us that we take it for granted, but it's not so granted for AI. And these are import, important bits that you need for reasoning most of the times, not just for sentiment analysis, but any kind of reasoning. So when people talk about AI today, they are mostly talking about sub-symbolic AI, a kind of AI 2.0. But before that, we had 50 years of symbolic AI, the AI that is modeling the typical properties of, of things and people and, and, and jobs. So machine learning is great, but what is it? Is the machine really learning? Is it learning everything that it needed, it's needed to learn, or is it something missing? And also, today, people are so excited about neural networks, but neural networks have been there for the past 50 years. So what is really new about all this new wave of technology that people are excited about? The difference is that now you don't need someone that is sitting there and doing the feature extraction for you. So in the past, if you had to find out whether this is a car or not, you ask someone to tell you what are the specific features that make a car a car, and then you use those features for training and classification. Today, everybody's so excited because we don't need a human intervention anymore. We just feed a lot of example and the machine will learn by example. But there is a very big risk associated with this. We don't know anymore what are the features that the machine is taking into account to, to make uh, decisions. And this is very risky. Many people are using AI to hire people for HR and they don't know why a specific per person is better than the other. They just maybe feed the deep neural network with uh, examples of good CVs versus bad CVs, and then given a new CV, the neural network will decide whether this is good or not. But we don't know anymore which are the important features that the machine uses for classification. It could be that it's distinguishing between male and female candidates. It could be that it's distinguishing between race and stuff like that. We don't have, we, we lost that power of creating our own features. But still, these are very popular tools and there is literally a mad rush to get the scientists that can do the, the machine learning, the deep learning for us. But again, we need to be careful about what is this deep learning really learning. It's sometimes it's like uh, trying to teach someone how to snowboard without, without even trying to snowboard. It's just showing some examples, but you don't really know how to do something until you really try it. So in that sense, we should not fool ourselves and think that we can solve everything with, with deep learning. There are many other things, especially when you talk about language that you must take into account. So language is really not just a matter of numbers. Embeddings are powerful for some things, but when you talk about language, there are so many other things that are important. Otherwise, I could just scramble the words that I'm using to give this talk, and you should understand anyway what I'm saying, but that's not the case. <laughs> 